Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce. Glad to be with you today. I'm doing a series, and the name of this series is Christ Our Life Scriptural Bases. We wouldn't have much to say if we didn't have scriptural bases, and that's true. Okay, um, we, last time we talked, we're centering in on our oneness with Christ, union with Christ. You know, um, the living Bible, or uh, good news for modern man, I think is the name of that. Years ago it came out like that. Uh, when it talked about Gala um, Colossians 1.27, it says, Christ in you, the hope of glory. It says, Christ in union with you, the hope of glory. And that's the real meaning of that word in. It's not Christ, it's like me sitting in this room. That means I can go in and out of this room. I'm separate from this room. You see, it's not like that. We are men from our minds, that's how we think. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Christ so interpenetrated with you that you are one with him and you know it and you know it and it starts out by faith and really there will be a warfare of faith because Satan does not give up easily but you take it you take the truth and you eat the truth that's why Jesus said unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood you're not going to have life in you and that's the truth so you eat what is available to you, which is the truth of who you are in Christ. And as you take it, then God brings forth the new you, the new you. Now, the transformation happens. Okay, I love this scripture. It's in 2 Corinthians um, chapter 3, verse 18. Love this scripture. And it's beholding in a mirror. You know, years ago, there was a woman that wrote a, um, a song that says, unless we see Jesus in the mirror, we haven't seen him at all. So, hello, folks. I think that's exactly what this is saying. Look in verse 18. And that's how we're transformed. Like I said, we're not transformed by thinking hard enough or we're transformed supernaturally. It's by the works of the Spirit. The Spirit is the transforming power within us. It's The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, Mortify therefore the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit. Well, that simply means to take consider the earthly members of your body dead to sin. And that's a faith act. It's a, an act of faith and alive to God. And we can not only believe it for ourselves, we can believe it for our loved ones as well, or for the people that God has given you to believe it for. But as you stand there, the Holy Spirit does the transforming. Now, look at this mirroring process. This is a mirroring process. It also talks about it in the little book of James. We're going to read that too. In verse 18 of chapter 3 of 2 Corinthians, it says, But we all, with open face, beholding, as in a glass, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed into that same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. Okay, now what is this saying? Let's turn to, to James, because James is saying the same thing. Uh, James says, <clears throat> uh, in verse chapter 1, verse 22, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. And it says this, For if you be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, and so now people are saying, Well, see, Sylvia, the Bible says that we've got to be doers. I'm not saying that we should not manifest the fruits of the Spirit, but they're going to be the fruits of the Spirit, not your own efforts to try to manifest them. So, yes, we will be doers. We will but it's going to be the life of Christ coming through you. So what does this say? For if any of you be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. Here's a glass again. What is it? It's a mirror. So when I first go look in the mirror, in my mirror, um, I see Sylvia. I see the human me. Now, if I stop short there, this is what happens. And beholding himself, or beholding myself, and go away and straightway forgetting what manner of man he is, or what manner of woman he really is. That's what this is getting at. So it's saying, if I just go to the mirror and look in the mirror, and I, I just see Sylvia. Yeah, I'm not denying that Sylvia is not 
here I am, of course, and I see me and I'm trying to fix my hair and put makeup on so I can be on TV or whatever. Okay, but if I dare look through my human flesh and see who I really am and, ta and look and see through to who I really am and see the glory of God, so I'm not saying my flesh is God at all. I'm saying I still have a human flesh, but there is a glory that lives inside of me. It's Jesus inside of me. And if I gaze at that truth about who I am, I am changed. I am transformed from glory to glory to glory to glory. So the way of transformation is not stopping short and look just seeing myself, but looking through my flesh, my precious humanity, and seeing who I really am, who is Christ, the glorious one living inside me, I'm changed and transformed. Just like a, a butterfly comes into being, that worm is changed into a butterfly. It's a the act of metamorphosis. That's exactly what, the in the Greek, that's what that this word changed means. It's metamorphosis. So, it's a supernatural transformation. I mean, nobody can explain how a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. It's really a supernatural process, really. Because I've heard somebody say that actually the caterpillar becomes like liquid in the bottom of the cocoon before the miracle happens and it starts being transformed into that butterfly. And, and it comes out of the cocoon. It struggles to get out of the cocoon, just like I struggle to say and stand on who I really am. But as I look past me, go to your mirror, look past your human flesh, and look to the one who lives inside of you. And as you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, you will be transformed from glory to glory to glory. Now let's look back to James and go back to what it means to be a doer of the word, it says. So if I look in the mirror and I just see myself, I go away and I'm depressed. Because if it's all left up to me, forget it. I'm depressed. Okay. But now look at the next verse. The end result is being a doer of the word and not just a hearer. That's the end result. How do I do that? Look at verse 25. But whoso looketh, now you're looking into the mirror, into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. So what is the perfect law of liberty? Well, law in, the new, in a lot of the New Testament is talking about principle. Okay, so I look into the perfect, the completed principle of liberation. Actually, the, it's not principle. It's really person, really Christ. It's really looking into the perfect law of liberation, which is Christ himself, because he is the principle of liberation, you see. Then And continueth therein. So how do I be a doer of the word? How do I do it? But, okay, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, he didn't just, just hear it, but is a doer of the work. He, this man shall be blessed in his deeds. So how do I be a doer? It's to be a looker. <laughs> it's to look in the mirror. It's to see who I really am. It's to continueth therein. I am changed by the Spirit of God into that butterfly that I've always hoped I could be, in which I already am in Christ. And I continue therein, standing in that faith and fighting the fight of faith to say it. And, 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 and then as, as I stand there, then it comes. And as my, then my mouth will start measuring up to who I really am. My mind will start measuring up my, my, because I'm one with the living God with the Lord Jesus Christ, that I, that the fulfillment of John 17, that they might be one, just like Jesus was in the Father, and the Father was in Jesus, that they might be one in us. And that oneness is perfected in, in unity. So the, the two become one, just like the marriage. It says of the marriage in Ephesians chapter 5 and Genesis. It started in Genesis where um, the two became one flesh. That, that, that's what God said about Adam and Eve. The two becomes one flesh. It also says that in Ephesians chapter 5, that the two become one flesh. That's a picture of marriage. The outer marriage is a picture of the inner marriage of Christ living inside of us. 
and we are married with him. We are one with him. We merge together as one. So now we're thinking his thoughts. Now we're speaking his words. Now he's living. He's got a living expression to express his glory through. Now that's what I was created for. If we look way back in, in um, Isaiah, we read a lot of that, the first part of this series. But let's read this. It's, it's in Isaiah 43, verse 7. It says, Even everyone that is called by my name. Now, if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, you're called by his name. If you're married, just in the natural, if you're married to your husband, you lose your maiden name and you take his name. So it's talking about being one with so if you've taken the Lord Jesus Christ's name, you're married to him. And it says, For I have called him for my glory, for the purpose of expressing my glory through him. And he's called you by your name, your own personal name. That's what it says in Isaiah 45, verse 3. It says, I will give you the treasures of darkness, hidden riches of secret places, that you might know that I'm the God of Israel that calls you by your name your own personal name. He knows you, and he not only has called you by his, by your name, he calls you unto his name so that you take his name so that the glory, now the glory is beginning to come on this earth. It's coming in your earth. It's being manifested. It's not good enough that I can say all these things, and it's not really fully manifested as a living reality. Manifestation is important. Being a doer is important. It is. But the way we do it, we've got to learn the hard way on how to be a doer, which is simply looking into the mirror and seeing who I really am and standing on that truth. And as you do, you are changed from glory to glory. That's what's, changed, that's what's transformed me. One day, as I, as I kept taking the truth and kept speaking it against and almost being ridiculous in speaking it, I couldn't help it because everything seemed so the opposite one day I was sitting in my living room and I said, how did all this happen? I don't even, I'm not the same person. I don't feel the same way. I don't, I'm not trying to get my husband to change so that I can be happy anymore. I'm not needy. I don't need him to be anything. I'm, I'm satisfied. I'm completed. I'm full. I'm whole. How did I get there? How did I, how do I know this? It was effortless without any effort of my own, just like the butterfly, he uh, comes out of the cocoon. He labors to come out, but that's simply, that labor is the labor of faith. It's just standing on the truth. Then, then all of a sudden, the Spirit has transformed him into that beautiful butterfly. That's what you are. You are a beautiful butterfly. Start saying it. I wrote, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 1.30 says this, that Christ has made, has been made unto us all wisdom, all righteousness, all sanctification, all redemption. Does that mean we have to get all these things? No, we've already got them in Christ. We need to recognize, move in by faith, and take it. All right, well, one day I was thinking about somebody I know that is a, so depressed. This person kind of likes their depression. This person likes being sick. I don't. I hate it. I hate it for her. I want for her to really realize who she is in Christ. She pretty much fights everything I say because she doesn't want it. She likes being depressed. She likes taking anti antidepressants. I hate it, though. God hates it, though. God wants her to be free. So one day, actually it was in the middle of the night, God gave me a vision of her as the new man, and he told me to start standing on the truth of who she really was. And even though she was this poor, depressed person that went around, you know, couldn't even function. Talk about dysfunctional person. This person is very dysfunctional. Could not even function. Stand, you be her intercessor, and you stand on the truth of who she really is. And this is what I came up with, and you're, you're going to see this posted on the Liberating Secret website under, this is probably lesson number 23. We're talking about our oneness with Christ. This is what I started confessing about her when she was not this at all in manifestation in or what she was doing at all. But she's a Christian. I knew she knew the Lord. I knew she hated brokenness. She even told me one time, I don't have to be broken because I was cheering somebody that was being broken because I think that's wonderful. Once you're broken, you can finally see. 
She says, I don't have to be broken. My parents don't have to be broken. None of us have to be broken. Uh, and I said, oh, yes, you do. And she said, no, no, we don't, we don't. I said, oh, yes, you do. <laughs> so now she's in the state of brokenness. Now I'm saying, come on, rise and shine. Your day's come. The light of the Lord has come on you. This is the truth. And so I have to stand on it before she even sees it. And I don't like a lot of her behavior, but it doesn't matter. It causes me some pain. It doesn't matter. What difference does that make? It's not about me. It's about what God is going to bring forth in her. So this is, the, this is what came. I'm seeing all of her, what's inside of her, replaced with Satan. So I'm seeing everything replaced. I'm seeing her living the replaced life instead of living uh, just the fleshly, poor, old, poor me, depressed life. And so I started exchanging her body parts. Uh, that's, that's just kind of a fun thing to do. And I thought of her head. And this is what I'm confessing. She has the mind of Christ. Did she feel like it? No. Does she sound like it? No. That's the real truth about her. I'm going to confess that. That's who she is. Christ is made into her wisdom. That's the mind of Christ. So he's in her. That's what I'm confessing for her. She has a cleansed consciousness. What do you mean? Her consciousness is filled with, oh, poor me, and I sin every day, and, you know, and she doesn't like a lot of what I teach. You see, I say, no, I'm not taking it. Now, who has the final word? Her, because she's just confessing the flesh. Or me, who's confessing the real truth about her. I think I do. I think the Holy Spirit does. I think the Lord Jesus Christ does. And I'm saying she has a sound mind. Does she have a, no, she's on antidepressants, about six different ones. It's a wonder she can function at all, and she can hardly. She has a pure mind. Does she have a, does, is that what's manifested? No, but I'm standing on that truth. She has the wisdom of God. Does she? No, she's living in foolishness. I'm not taking it. I'm not going to believe it. I'm going to stand for her because it's, it's the truth. What about her eyes? I'm going to say that her eyes are too pure to behold evil. Well, is that, the is that what's manifested? No. But is that the real truth about her? Yes. I'm going to stand on the truth. I'm not going to, I'm not going to join with her in this craziness and agree that she's just an absolute you know, insane person, which that's what she manifests. Am I going to take that? No. Am I denying the fact that she is a sick person? No, I'm not living in denial, but I'm not going to see it as her reality, as the real truth about her. I'm, does she have the single eye of faith? No, she doesn't have the single eye of faith. She's double-minded. She sees herself separated. She's unstable in all of her ways. Am I going to say that? I'm going to say the truth for her. She has the single eye of faith. What about her mouth? Well, her mouth is full of bitterness and, uh, and nothing pure coming out of it. I'm going to say that she has a mouth that has words of faith. And, I mean, am I crazy? Or am I standing on the truth of what God says? You see, this is what an intercessor does. We're going to talk about that, too. We're really going to go into what intercession is. This is what it means to stand in the gap for somebody that can't believe for themselves, that's stuck in all that flesh appearances and flesh reality that is manifest in her simply because she gives power to it and believes it. And she can't get any higher than what she believes. But I can stand and I can say it, and I do. And the Lord has charged me to do that, along with other people. There are other people that stand the same way with me. So it's not just me. We've... She's got a whole army of people that stand in, in the truth for her. She, oh, What about her heart? I'm saying that her heart is full of unconditional love. Well, I'm telling you, everything she does outwardly is it's all conditioned on what how, how you're going to do for her. It's never about what she's going to do for you, and it's never unconditional love. I'm saying she's got it there because Jesus is there. I say her arms. What about her arms? I say her arms are ready to embrace all of life as an adventure of faith. Well, no, she's scared to death. She's a scared little person that stays at home half the time laying on her couch. Uh, what about her hands? I'm saying her hands are raised in worship and praise, that she's praising God with a sacrifice of praise. She might feel terrible. She's praising God anyway. Okay, is that manifested? No. But I'm going to take it by faith. What about her legs? I say that her legs are running the race of faith. She's not running the race of faith outwardly. She's all about, it's all about her 
everybody else's good works and her, her justification of how miserable she is. <laughs> well, feet. What about her feet? I'm saying her feet are beautiful because she loves to proclaim the good news of the gospel of grace, of pure grace. Now, I say this is the way. This is the way we're standing on the truth. Does she really? That She is a picture of a person that absolutely is living in the wilderness and going around and around and trying to improve herself, trying not to be uh, depressed. She can't try not to be depressed. She is depressed. And gone for help. She has gone for, to psychology for help. And they've helped her just analyze herself more and more and more and more. That's what they've helped her do. They haven't helped her take a leap of faith in who she really is. And that's what we 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 want for her. Well, will we be the people that tells her, maybe, maybe not. Some uh, uh, reaps, some sows the seed, and some reaps. But I told her this one time. I said, I want to tell you this. If I never see this on, and I'm a whole lot older than her. And I said, if I never see this while I'm still alive, I will see this from the other side because I will have this because I don't care what price it costs me to have. I will have this. That's how much we want this for this person. Because And it's not us that really wants it. It's Jesus that really wants it. So, But I'm charging you. You say these things about yourself. You dare and stand. If you're not saying it about yourself, you stand in these truths about yourself. If you see your loved ones acting out the other way, and they really are Christians, you stand in the truth of who they really are. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit of God, He is the Spirit of transformation. This is the true power of Christ's resurrection. It says in Philippians chapter 3, first Paul says this, And being found in Christ, not having my own righteousness, because we don't live by our own righteousness, which is of the law, which is through self-effort, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that is of God by faith in Christ. Then he says this, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. It's not me rising. It's him rising inside of me that causes me to rise out of the old poor wormy mentality, the um, chicken mentality where I have my head totally to the ground, looking downward always at myself and everything else and all of life, trying to get my substance and what I eat from this earth, or am I going to be an eagle and fly above? Turkeys are eagles. Years ago, um, there was a minister, Peter Lord, preached a sermon, turkeys are eagles. Are you a turkey? Or are you going to be an eagle? Well, Philippians 3 says that I might know him and the power of his resurrection as you stand as an eagle, and if you stand for your loved ones as eagles and not turkeys and not just helping them be downward because you're condemning them all the time and blaming them all the time, but dare to speak the truth and stand in the truth for them, you see, then you will know him and the power of his resurrection. This is the real power. Power you know, comes in many ways. This is the personal power that raises you, raises your consciousness, raises you, raises you in victory, raises you in peace. The out from you shall flow rivers of living water, the peace that passes all understanding, joy unspeakable, full of glory. This is how it's burst into manifestation because you know him and the power of his resurrection and you are one with him. The two have become one. His spirit joined with your spirit like iron in fire, the iron, a piece of iron caught on fire. It's the fire interpenetrates the iron. The iron doesn't become the fire. The fire doesn't become the iron, but they become one. And that's what our oneness in Christ is. Thank you so much for joining us. And I believe with the Spirit, with the Holy Spirit, with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Father of glory, that you too will know this oneness that will totally set you free and cause you to be everything you've ever wanted to be. Cause you to be that because you dare look into the mirror and see who you really are in Christ. Thank you so much for being with, with me today. Write me and tell me of your experiences. Tell me. You'll encourage us. We, we love encouragement just like you do. So call, write us, call us, get on the internet and see us. And may God richly bless you. Goodbye. 
I hope that you've been blessed by today's program. These programs have been brought to you by Christ Our Life Ministries, based in Louisville, Kentucky. If you would like to know more about us, please check out our websites, www.theliberatingsecret.org and www.spiritbroadcasting.net. The Liberating Secret is our literary site. We offer many articles by many authors, and I have my own writings on it as well. You will find a bookstore where you will be able to purchase many of my own books and booklets as well as other authors who also teach the truths of liberation. We have an online monthly newsletter that you might want to sign up for. Check it out. You're going to be blessed if you do. Now for our, uh, our other website, which is the Spirit Broadcasting Network. All of our past TV and radio programs are being broadcast on this website. If you have a favorite program, you might want to find it here. If you are interested in any events, such as conferences, retreats, or home meetings that we are conducting, please check out our calendar that you will find on both of our websites. We have an annual conference here in Louisville, Kentucky in May. It is always held the weekend after Mother's Day. We have great fellowship, great teaching, and great music by Ron Block, and that he's from Nashville. Twice a year, I teach a woman's retreat at Polly's Island, South Carolina. Women, don't wait to sign up, sign up for Polly's. You will love it. If you would like to have a meeting in your area, please email me at Sylvia P at theliberatingsecret.org. And thank you for joining us, and may God richly bless you. Goodbye.